Hey kids, this is the Drive to School podcast and today we're going to talk about some things you're going to see in church this Sunday. And this Sunday in church, depending on sort of what set of readings you use, you might hear about the transfiguration of our Lord. Jesus is changed, transfigured. A regular, old, normal looking Jesus, well, his face shines like the sun, his clothes whiter than white light itself. And uh, it's kind of a pretty cool experience to Peter and James and John, the only three who get to go up on the mountain and see the whole thing. And that's fantastic. It's so fantastic that uh, we need to say, but wait, there's more, because wait, there's more. On either side of Jesus, glowing like the sun is Moses and Elijah. This is uh, this is the, the, the forerunner in the faith, Moses. And uh, just maybe, just maybe, this is what Jesus actually means when he says when John the Baptist is beheaded like a chapter ago. For those who have ears to hear, he is Elijah come again. This might maybe just be John the Baptist, like reheaded and safe. This moment that Peter and James and John get to see is everything that they have dreamed about, everything that they have left everything behind to actually see. Uh, This is Jesus actually looking like God. This is a safe place where none of the people can get us. This is a safe place where Jesus doesn't look like he's going to suffer and neither did the disciples. This is a safe place where even the dead seem to be alive. And so Peter, he wants to set up shop here. He says, let's let's build three tents here. We'll, We'll stay here forever. One for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. I guess we'll stay here too. Don't mind us. We're, we're, we're going to be real quiet. And in the middle of uh, Peter's big spiel, he gets to have exactly what he asked for. The voice booms from the sky. This is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. It's the exact same thing really that uh, we heard when Jesus was baptized, but now we don't get it in terms of mercy, in terms of Jesus going down into the waters of the Jordan to take our sins and carry them to the cross. Now we have God looking like God, acting like God, sounding like God, and Peter is not about that noise. He falls on his face, utterly terrified, because for all we want God to reveal himself in power, we're not ready for it. For all we want God to deal with us only in terms of of glory, we can't handle it. And and for all we want this perfect little moment to to somehow shield us from all of the other moments that are not near perfect enough, uh, we lose sight of the fact that if this is all that we have, well, this is in no more comforting, comforting than any of the moments were before, at least not to the people who've actually had them, like Peter. He falls on his face. He's afraid to say anything until Jesus walks over looking like normal Jesus again. He is still true God, true man, but he looks normal. Lifting up their eyes, it says, the apostles saw Jesus only. And this is not less. This is this is the great miracle. When they see Jesus untransfigured after the fact, it's not less. It's everything. This is still true God become man to die for them, to save them from sin, death, and the power of the devil. He is still the location of heaven because heaven is where Jesus is. It's always where heaven is. That's where Jesus is. So Moses, John the Baptist, Elijah himself, all of the angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, they are where Jesus is. And Jesus is there for them. And this is a Jesus who doesn't simply reveal himself in power, but in mercy. He picks up Peter, who has had a a kind of a rough day, just, just too much of a good thing. And well, they get to go back down the mountain. And here's the thing. Um, When you have gone looking for your safe place absolutely everywhere and come up empty, you have a Jesus who doesn't stay up on the mountain but comes down to die in Jerusalem for you, for me, for all. So that perfect places aren't measured by whether or not there's good or bad things going on, but whether or not Jesus would be there. And, well, he would put himself in the worst of everything for you and for me. And in the same way, if you are up in that perfect little spot and afraid that it just can't get any better than this and it's sooner or later going to have to end, you get to recognize that that's okay. Jesus will come down the mountain, but it's actually for something better than the mountain of transfiguration. See, the hill of Golgotha is better than the mount of tra- transfiguration because on the hill of Golgotha, when Jesus cries out, it is finished, nobody really wants to look, but it's a thing we can actually behold as as good, as the real glory, because here our sins are forgiven. Here we have a God who will deal with us, not according to what we deserve, not according simply to, to power, but wholly according to mercy. Here, God wants to actually gather us in and give us something that endures the pains of this world and carries us forward to the life everlasting. And so the transfiguration is a glorious thing, not just because we get to see Jesus looking glorious, but the transfiguration is a glorious thing because we get to see regular Jesus at the end of it and recognize that it's the same guy 
the same regular Jesus. And that carries forward then to when you have communion in your church because that's the same Jesus, the same heaven is there, the same angels and archangels and all the company of heaven are there. See, we are gathered around something that is awful ordinary looking because we don't need it to be a mountaintop experience. We don't need it to be something that is utterly terrifying. More often than not, sooner or later in life, you're going to get something that's utterly terrifying and the church then isn't sort of an entertainment or an excitement, but it's it's the safe place. It's the escape from all the things that we can't handle because there you have Jesus only saving you, forgiving you, drawing you unto life everlasting so that all the things in the world that you are afraid either can't last or, or will end or just can never actually get as good as you need them to be. All of them are met with a Jesus who says, no, no, you are saved and you will be carried forward into the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting when all of the things that you imagine will be not only yours, but yours forever in a way that cannot be eroded or destroyed. Lift up your eyes and see Jesus only. Go to church. Take communion. Understand what it is, what your pastor is doing when he holds up the body and blood of Jesus and he says, the peace of the Lord be with you always. You can actually find peace now. You can see Jesus only in that body, in that cup. That is Jesus and Jesus for you. And that is everything that you need.